Welcome to the Laravel Collections Guide. In this series, we take a look at each of the available methods in the Laravel Collection class and dive deep through examples in explaining what it does. Today, we're going to be taking a look at take. Take is a method that would allow you to limit the number of records in your collection. As always, let's start with our first basic example. Let's collect, and we'll have a simple array with four digits in it. And then we're going to take two of those entries. And let's check out the results. So there we are. We have one and two, which means we've taken the first two elements of this collection. So take will allow you to limit how many records are in your collection. Now, one thing to know about take is, for example, if we set seven and there are not enough records, it will not fill in any of the remaining records, which means if you're explicitly expecting seven records in your collection, take will not fill in if there's any missing records. So keep that in mind, because if you're running through a loop expecting X amount of elements inside a collection, but there aren't enough to fill all of that, take will not fill any of those. Now, another thing you could do with take is that you can actually grab from the end. So instead of grabbing one and two, if you wanted to grab three and four, you can pass in a negative. So we'll say negative two, and if we take negative two, then we get three and four this time. So a negative will simply start from the end. If we said take one, it will give us four, as you see here, because it's going backwards. This would be very similar from saying reverse and then take one. That gives us the exact same result. However, it avoids that extra method call. You can simply call take minus one, and there we are. You can get from the end. Take is a nice utility method that you'll use all the time to limit how many items are in your collections. However, one last thing to keep in mind about take is the following. Let's say we had data and we collected that data. And then on data, we called take and then we return data. We actually get back our original collection. Take, just like many of the collection methods, does not affect the original collection take simply returns a brand new collection. So if you needed to save the results of that, you could say new collection equals that. And then instead of returning data, we'll return new collection. And there you are. We're back to where we started. Another important point to remember with take is that you may be tempted to do something like take one and take one would almost be the same as calling first. However, not so much. And that's because take returns a collection. So keep that in mind. First returns an actual value and take returns a collection that may contain one or more values. So that's the slight difference between take and first. The same can be said about take and last. Last could be called and it would be the same as saying take minus one. We get four. Instead, theoretically, you could call last However, you see here, you only get the value back. So how is that more useful than first or last? Well, take allows you to daisy chain several other methods. If we change this to take three, then we could call something like reverse, for example. And there we are. So we have taken three items and then we've reversed that collection. That type of functionality would not be applicable in first or last. So keep that in mind whenever you're using the take method.